please uh, be with us and guide us. Help us uh, get closer to you, closer to the truth. This uh, this Sabbath meeting, guide our minds, our thoughts. Help me to speak uh, the correct words. Help us to understand your will for uh, these times that you are living in. We thank you, Lord, and we ask for your special blessing. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So... We will uh, start this uh, presentation. It's uh, uh, a summary of the new study, uh, which was already presented uh, last year in June. Uh, but uh, it was um, Uh, yeah, a study that was, uh, I think, called hampered with uh, lots of uh, interruptions. So I uh, would like to present it uh, again, but then hopefully without too many interruptions so people can get uh, maybe a better view of things. So um, and like I said, it's about uh, the neural connection with July 18. This was a study done in Italy 2017. And it was uh, undiscovered. Uh, for a long time, until after July 18, actually, when uh, it was rediscovered by accident. And it showed a lot of interesting uh, connections with uh, July 18, which I will uh, try to show. <coughs> and the study um, is trying to show if there is possible uh, Another scenario of what might have happened on July 18, 2020. We know uh, that the day went by without uh, the, that what we expected to happen, uh, nothing happened. But could there be an explanation for, for that? Uh, so, like I said, this study uh, of me uh, was posted on FFA. I'll just read from the from the slides. Uh, was posted on FFA chat that incidentally resurfaced weeks after the July 18th disappointment. This was a study called Tidings Out of the East. It was written by Border Blessing from Africa, uh, it was presented in Italy 2017, it was presented by Tabo at that time, and the study was dealing with the seven thunders being paralleled with the first seven Caesars of Rome. Uh, but this post on the chat, it went largely uh, unnoticed. Uh, but it needs to be emphasized again that this study about the seven Caesars was presented in Italy 2017, one year uh, before the issue even of time setting was raised by uh, Parminda, but also before Tess even came on the scene. And one year before July 18 even came into the picture. Uh, this is a uh, short of the study of the seven thunders 
and we will look uh, into that. So, the study about the Roman Caesars starts off by depicting a line with our seven familiar rail marks. Right, we know uh, them. We should, we should know them quite well. Uh, 1989, time of the end. Uh, 1992, increase of knowledge. 1996, formalization of the message. 2001, 9-11, after midnight cry, midnight, midnight cry, and Sunday law. And in this study, uh, they are being paralleled with the first seven Caesars, uh, Julius Caesar, Augustus, Tiberius, Tiberius, Caligula, Claudius, Nero, and Galba. And it's interesting how uh, especially, uh, we, we will look at Claudius and, and Nero that are connected to the midnight and the midnight Friday mark. Uh, so, going first to Claudius, the study, uh, in the study, Claudius is connected to the midnight uh, ray mark, as you can see. The study mentions an event from the French Revolution and connects this uh, also to, to midnight. Uh, this is part, a, a short a screenshot from the that, uh, that quote in the study. It reads uh, November 9, 1791, the Legislative Assembly issues a decree ordering the emigres to return to France. Those who won't return by January 1st, 1792, will be suspected of conspiracy against France, for which the only answer is the death penalty. Uh, so, what we see here is the, an event that concerns a probational period during the French Revolution, starting from November 9 until January 1st. And these are the only days, by the way, mentioned in the entire study. But It is remarkable that we already saw uh, November 9 showing up, being connected to midnight, when only one year later and complete, completely unrelated to this study, midnight was set already at November 9, 2019. Or, uh, uh, and only one year later, we, we set midnight to November 9, 2019. But in the study, it also mentions uh, November 9, which is uh, not interesting, but could be a uh, coincidence. It would be though, uh, very unlikely. <laughs> but the movement we attributed a close observation to November 9 in relation to the Omega movement. Right, and remarkably, this period during the French Revolution from November 9 to January 1st, which took place during the French Revolution, was also a probational period, during which time uh, French refugees had opportunity to return to France or be sentenced to death. So it's, uh, so we see a connection there, not just with the days in the family, but also 
that it conserves a probational period. And on top of this, the, the number of days between November 9 and January 1st is exactly 54 days, inclusive reckoning, and 55, 54, of course, being a, is a symbol of the fifth day of the fourth month, or July 21, which we call midnight, right? because uh, in 1844, July 21 was the fifth day, the, at the biblical date, fifth day of the third month. Fifth day of the fourth month. Which was exactly halfway between first day of the first month and the tenth day of the seventh month, right? So we, we all know that. That's why we call it midnight. Uh, also, the reign of Claudius ended when he died in uh, 54 AD. So again, we see, we recognize here the midnight symbol. 54, 15, 4 month. And moreover, uh, Claudius died October 13 in in the year um, 60, I forgot the year he died. Yeah, 60, uh, but in th that particular year, the October 13, at the biblical date, the 21st day of the seventh month, uh, and symbolically, July 21st uh, is what we typify as midnight in 1844. Uh, of course, it was the year 54. I just uh, <laughs> said that he died in 54 AD. All right. So in that year, uh, October 13 was the 21st day of the seventh month. Right. So that's uh, Claudius that we now uh, dealt with. Going to, to Nero. Uh, after the death of Claudius, Emperor Nero takes over. Who in this study of the seven corners is subsequently. Subsequent, uh, being positioned on the midnight primary mark. And no particular date is referred to in this study in connection with Nero, but the study does explicitly uh, mention the well known and infamous historical event of Nero burning down the city of Rome during his reign in the year 64 AD. This is part of uh, the, the study where you see it mentioning uh, a Nero connected to the midnight cry. Then it says Nero in 66 AD. That's, that's a mistake. It should be 64 AD. Uh, it's a reference to Matthew. Then it says Nero burned down the city of Rome. And no date is being mentioned. Uh, it reads about this time, a terrible fire occurred in Rome. I wish nearly one half of the city was burned. And Nero himself, it was rumored, had caused the flames to be kindled. But to a first suspicion, he made a pretense of great generosity by assisting the homeless and destitute. He was, however, accused of the crime. The people were excited and enraged, and in order to clear himself, and also to rid the city of a class whom he feared and hated. He Nero turned the accusation upon the Christians. His defiance succeeded, and thousands of the followers of Christ, men, women, and children, were cruelly put to death. This is what was just the right. Uh, 
says the city was the empire sanctuary of strength. From Daniel 11, 31. And then it says America's sanctuary of strength is the US Constitution. The Constitution is burned when it is repudiated at the midnight cry. Because it's interesting that uh, it mentions this that the, 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 at the midnight cry, we expected the Constitution to be burned uh, in a sense, to so agree. And uh, now in, in a way, that is, if you look at the corona, at the COVID crisis, that's more or less what we saw happening with the vaccine mandate. But, uh, at least they tried to burn it. But it was, uh, how, how do you call it? It was. Uh, In, uh, in court, it was how do you talk word? The judge did not permit uh, the mandate to uh, to take place. So. Uh, Continuing, so no date was um, mentioned in this study, but if you look up the date of this event when Nero burned her own, if you look up this date in history books, uh, it's, it shows that Nero burned Rome on July 18. Uh, it reached the great fire of Rome, breaks out and destroys much of the city beginning on July 18 in the year 64. Despite the well-known stories, there is no evidence that the Roman Emperor Nero either started the fire or played the fiddle while it burned. Still, he did use the disaster to further his political agenda. And this is also an uh, interesting statement. Uh, as saying that uh, there is no evidence that the, the emperor uh, started the fire, but he did use it for his political agenda. But we, of course, have uh, uh, first of all the date of July 18. This, uh, yeah. Remarkable, astounding to find that this event took place in the night of July 18. Uh, so, the very day that Rome burned was the very day that we predicted Nashville to burn, and which we labeled to be the Midnight Fire. So, uh, long before we even determined the dates and events of both uh, Midnight and Midnight Cry, these dates, uh, November 9 and July 18, and corresponding events uh, were already hidden in the study of the Caesars, uh, which can in no way, of course, be a coincidence. And we, of course, must ask ourselves uh, the question of all this means. Right. Uh, we'll, we'll try and look at uh, this question. But yeah, like we just read, we, 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 we saw that they, they said there was no evidence that Nero uh, had part in, in, in the burning of Rome. Uh, so, but yeah, despite some historians denying Nero's involvement in, in the Inferno, there is uh, support for the theory that he 
did burn down the city of Rome on purpose in order to bypass the Senate and to rebuild Rome, and in particular his palace, as he saw fit, and to further his own political agenda. Um, this is uh, from the website of Arche archaeology.org. It reads, uh, in the first century AD, there was no building in Rome, a sumptuous, ornate, or grand, as the Domus Aurea or Golden House. That's the palace uh, that Nero was set up. Uh, a lavish imperial residence and sprawling park covering hundreds of acres, acres in an area known as the Opian Hill, between the Palatine and Escaline Hills on the city's northern side. Constructed by the Emperor Nero and born from the ashes of the massive AD 64 fire that destroyed the city center and cleared the space that it would occupy. Perhaps explaining the persistent suspicion held by many Romans that the Emperor himself had set the fire. Uh, another one, a quote from Vatican City Tours, interesting uh, website. After the great fire of Rome, which saw Rome burn for six days, rumors began to spread that Nero had caused it to build his new palace on Palatine Hill. All right, so uh, it's also known that Nero blamed the Christians for the fire, and that he began to ruthlessly persecute them in the most gruesome ways. But Elamite like herself is also saying flat out that Nero was responsible for the fire. So we are thankful for this quote of Ellen White. And she herself uh, confirms that Nero was responsible for the fire. And she says uh, about this time, the terrible fire occurred in Rome, by which nearly one half of the city was burned. And Nero himself had caused the flames to be kindled. So, so there it is. But to avert suspicion, he made a pretense of great generosity by assisting the homeless and destitute. He was, however, accused of the crime. The people were excited and enraged. And in order to clear himself, and also to rid the city of a class who he feared and hated. Nero turned the accusation upon the Christians. His device succeeded, and thousands of the followers of Christ, men, women, and children, were poorly put to death. So, we see here uh, an uh, stating that Nero himself was responsible for the fire. And yeah, that's nowadays that's what we would call a, uh, a false flag attack, right? Yeah, the fact that Nero himself caused the fire and blaming it on others is what we would call nowadays, uh, what we would nowadays call a false flag operation or an inside job. Yeah, it is the event whereby those in governmental or in powerful positions and in, and in positions of trust stage or commit an act of terrorism against their own people and blame the attack on another party for political purposes. And there are multiple examples in history where such crimes have been planned or committed against innocent civilians. In that sense, you Nero know, wasn't the first, but he most certainly is in the last. Uh, please do some research by yourselves on, um, for example, the Gulf of Tonkin, Operation Northwoods, etc., to name but a few false flag operations. This is uh, from Wikipedia. So these things uh, happen in the, in the real world that we're living in. But um, and to make an application uh, based on the information we have so far, 
you see that Neon himself burned down the city of Rome. Uh, it was a false flag operation. He had a political agenda. Uh, he blamed it on another party, the Christians. Uh, he lines up with the Midnight Cry Raymark. And we see the date that he, he burned down Rome on July 18. So he lines up with July 18. So we have uh, all these connections. Uh, looking then at our national prediction, could it be possible that a false flag attack on the city of Nashville was plotted to take place on July 18 for political purposes and for which another party, in this case uh, Muslims, would get the blame? And could it be that this operation was called off because of the widespread publication of our prediction? Right? It was printed all over the news. Um, that may all seem preposterous, but it is a scenario that actually seems to make uh, a lot of sense. Because in this way, our prediction, the date and event, would be uh, correct after all. Uh, many lives were saved, right? Because the attack did not take place. Uh, and he also showed that we cannot set time in, in that sense because. Uh, the predicted event did not come to pass. So, yeah, it's kind of a win-win situation. Um, continuing. And that the history of Nero is of significance for our time becomes evident by uh, also looking, looking at the rainy period. It has been recorded the Nero reigned from October 13, 54 AD until June 9, 68 AD. And don't these dates look uh, familiar to us? Uh, these are the very dates that led up to the proclamation of the Meta Cry for the Peace on October 13, 2018. If you have a quick look at, uh, at this diagram, we can see uh, June 9 there and October 13. Right there. Uh, based upon June 9, on the June 9 day mark, October 13 was predicted to be the day when the midnight cry would be given, which was a period of uh, exactly 126 days between June 9 and October 13. And it's interesting that we see these two dates in, in the reign of Nero, uh, but then uh, in Nero. But it, yeah, it should tell us that uh, we should have a closer look at what Nero did in history, right? Oh, that's what we are doing uh, right now. And about Nero, Sister Wright says the uh, following There was no atrocity which he would not perpetrate, no foul act to which he would not stoop. But that was the character of, of Nero, and she continues to say uh, the details of the iniquity practice in his court are too degrading, too horrible for description. His abandoned wickedness created disgust and loathing, even in many who were forced to share his crimes. There were a constant fear as to what enormities he he would suggest next. Yet, 
even such crimes as Nero's did not shake the, the allegiance of his subjects. He was acknowledged as the absolute ruler of the whole civilized world. More than this, he was made the recipient of divine honors and was worshipped as a god. So this should ring a bell, right? Uh, this, this should uh, it should be obvious that Neo here represents uh, Rome, uh, the papacy, modern Rome in our day. So yeah, this is not a minus of the papacy when the Pope will again be the supreme ruler of the world. That's what we are uh, expecting, that's what we are predicting, that's what the you know, right says, the Bible says. Uh, the Pope will be once again the supreme supreme ruler of the world. And Nero was uh, considered the absolute ruler of the whole civilized world. So we see a parallel there. Uh, reading on. And who wants to be worshipped as a god and is receiving divine honors. So that also connects very well with uh, APC. Neo typifies APC here and also all the wicked powers that are conspire, conspiring to set up the new world order, as, a, as we call it, that will eventually lead up to a worldwide Sunday law. And that's what we expect to uh, take place in the near future. And about New Palace, uh, we can read the uh, following. Nero wants to build himself a new palace. And in the Bible, a palace can typify uh, state power or, govern or government. Uh, if you read Daniel 11, 45. Uh, could this suggest then that Rome or the papacy, as typified by Nero, wanted to use July 18 to set up a new uh, world government, so to say? Right? If he, if he uh, reflects the, the Rome, the papacy, Babylon, uh, could July 18 have been used to take another step towards the uh, uh, new world order, another step in their agenda? And it is my belief that they all uh, does typify modern world Babylon, and in particular those forces that are secretly working behind the scenes to accomplish their agenda in setting up a new world order using self-induced disasters and calamities, false flag operations as a means to that end. And we will eventually see the Pope being placed at the head of this world government, receiving complete power and authority yeah. And we will see the enforcement of a global Sunday law or a mark of the beast, at which point its fall will be complete. A fall which we know is a progressive law. That's what Sister White says. Uh, when we talk about Babylon's fall and falling, she says that the fall will be complete when they uh, introduce a, 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 a Sunday law. Uh, Sister Wright says um, the following uh, determined to Ephes, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, the image of God in man, Satan works with an intensity of effort to hide God from few. Uh, not openly does he work, but secretly, mingling the human and the divine. Mysterious and genuine, so seeking to bring confusion and distress. But in proportionate power, divine mercy is revealed, 
to counteract this wicked working and bring to light the enemy's hidden purposes. So, as these developments uh, yeah, that we are seeing are, are progressing uh, behind the scenes secretly, God is still bringing uh, these purposes uh, to light uh, for us to see, uh, which is uh, yeah, very important, of course. <coughs> Because, uh, as this slide says, in the very time in which we live, the Lord has called his people and has given them a message to bear. He has called them to expose the wickedness of the man of sin. So, if I'm reading this correctly, we are expected to expose these uh, yeah, these these sins, these wicked acts they are committing. These uh, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, the, the, the secret agenda. Uh, we are to expose it. Whatever we can, uh, whatever the Lord is showing us. And the Lord is not showing it just to us, but he is showing it to the world, not just by uh, us, but in all kinds of uh, investigations, uh, doc doc documentaries that uh, are out there that show uh, what is happening behind closed doors with a secret. Uh, there's a lot of good information out there. I think, I believe God is showing, uh, God is revealing for the world to see what is happening in this world. So, like, like we said, we are to expose the weakness of the man of sin. Uh, in our last presentation, we try to uh, yeah, to do ex to do exactly that, we try to expose the COVID crisis uh, as being a conspiracy, and we show the wickedness of the vaccine mandate, for example, and the vaccine itself. And in the process, we observe that all four waymarks on our line were being connected to the number uh, sixty twenty nine. You remember that, right? We have these uh, four waymarks. Uh, which all seem to be connected to the normal 1629, which was uh, quite uh, extraordinary. But what, what do these four waymarks have uh, in common? Uh, we came to the conclusion that the COVID crisis uh, uh, was a conspiracy, it, it, it didn't come naturally. Uh, we have uh, many indications that it is uh, uh, planned, uh, we call it a uh, uh, conspiracy. It didn't just came by naturally, uh, they want to believe us, they would like to believe us, they, they would like us to believe that it came, uh, it happened naturally once every so many years, we have a pandemic, but uh, yeah, I believe this is, 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 is a conspiracy, it is, uh, uh, a uh, part of a plan that they have uh, to further their agenda. And it's not about health, it's about control, like the science says, right there. They want more power, they want more control over the people all over the world. So, uh, this was a conspiracy 
for anyone that wishes to see it. It's, it's very clear. Uh, going to the Sunnila remark, we know already from the Bible inspiration that the Sunnila is also a conspiracy. Amen. Sorry? Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah, amen. Sister Wright says, Church and state are now making preparations for the future conflict. Protestants are working in disguise to bring Sunni to the front, as did the Romanists. She also says, The Sunday movement is now making its way in darkness. The leaders are concealing the true issue and Many who unite in the movement do not themselves see where the undercurrent is standing. And there are more quotes where Sister Wright is saying, suggesting that this is also a conspiracy. They're working towards the Sunday law. So we can uh, give it a uh, stand. Uh, going to the first day of March, 1989, history <coughs> shows the fall of the Berlin Wall was also a conspiracy. It says so uh, quite clearly in the, in the cover of the Time magazine. It says how Reagan and the Pope conspired. It says uh, right there to assist Polish solidarity movement. So we know that this was a conspiracy between the Pope and the USA. So we give that stamp to. So, yeah, following this pattern, apart from all other available information concerning the events around 9 11, uh, I would say it's quite safe to assume that 9 11 was also a conspiracy. But many people even are aware of this building, building, building number seven that also collapsed on that day. This is uh, a, 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 a it shows on the left building number seven that also collapsed on 9-11 without a plane flying uh, into it. And on the right you see uh, Controlled demolition, how they take down buildings with explosives. And you see that there's almost no difference between the, the, the collapsing of the two buildings, WTC number seven and, and, and controlled demolition. But this is just one of many, many, many uh, pieces of evidence that does not add up and uh, yeah, if, if you look into it um, there is conspiracy all over 9-11 I would say this deserves more than one stamp but uh, yeah uh, if you just follow the pattern um, all these four, the, these four very much have in common is that they are all uh, a conspiracy. And I think that's the reason why the Lord is showing us these, these, these four remarks. They are showing a gradual build up towards uh, the new world order, towards uh, the Sunday law. These are the steps that Bruno is undertaking. <coughs> in uh, fulfilling their uh, agenda. Uh, 
So July 18 was expected to be the next major terrorist attack from the USA after 9-11. The scenario of July 18 being a potential false flag attack that has been called off uh, would line up with the strong suspicion that 9-11 was also a false flag operation. This uh, what we're trying to uh, say in the study. And in this way, if this is to uh, the act of narrow burning room, the 9-11 attacks, and the potential attack on July 18 would all have then similar characteristics. We would see a terrorist attack on the city in all three cases, in narrow 9-11 and July 18. We see a terrorist attack in the city and on innocent civilians. We see another party being blamed. Uh, Nero blamed the Christians. 9 11 uh, Muslims were blamed. In July 18, we also uh, said that Muslims would be uh, the ones committing the act. And as we know, we can see the execution of a political agenda. And I left we have the Patriot Act, uh, the vaccine mandate of the COVID crisis. We've seen that in the previous study. Uh, both are a, an infringement of the civil liberties of the people and are obvious steps closer towards a total abandoning of the Constitution, which we know will happen and will eventually lead up to the Sunday law and the new world order. And an attack on national on July 18, 2020 just might have been another step towards the pool and another attempt to create chaos to further restrict people's liberties. So that, that's how it works, right? By creating chaos, uh, people want a solution and they offer a, a solution which was already pre-programmed, pre-planned. That's how they make steps and gain more and more power and control uh, over us. Uh, I'm still looking at Nero. If you look at his birth date, we also see some interesting uh, connections. Uh, uh, so we say there's a connection between 9 11 and July 18. We looked at that in the previous slide. Uh, and where uh, July 18 or Called the Minat Cry, which is often symbolized by doublings. Right? If you see a doubling somewhere, we always try to apply it to the Minat Cry. Uh, and then the elephant is uh, often typified by April 19, the first day, first month, uh, which was the arrival of the Second Angel's message in 1844. So April 19 was uh, at the biblical date, first day, first month. And we know that it was the arrival of the second angel's message. And 9-11, in, in, our, in our time, uh, symbolically is also the first day of the first month and the arrival of the first angel's message. Uh, sorry, second angel's message. Uh, looking then at the Neo's birth date, we discovered that it produces some interesting symbols. He was born according to uh, uh, history. He was born on the 15th day of the 12th month, uh, December, that is, in the year 37 AD. So we have 15, 12, and 37. And if you 
at of these days you get 64 AD, which is the very year that Rome was set on fire on July 18, 64 AD. So that's an uh, interesting connection there. But if you multiply it, the day, the month, and the year, you get uh, 6660, or the symbol, symbol of the mark of the beast, which we keep seeing in, 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 uh, over and over again, also in our previous studies. We saw 666 showing up. Uh, and besides that, uh, if you split the date in half, right, if you, we, have, we have 15, 12, 27, or 1, 5, 1, 2, 3, 7. But if you just split it and add it up, you get 388. So this is uh, a doubling of uh, April 19. 194. Uh, so we see a Dublin there, and also we see April 19 there, the symbols of July 18, Mirai Cry, and 9 11, first day, first month. And second witness, if you take the square root of his birthday, 15, 12, 27. It also shows the uh, same number, 388, which is odd, which is uh, not uh, common. If you, uh, and normally if you take the, if you perform this operation with, with other, other, other numbers, you don't get this result. But it's interesting that if you take the square root, you also get a 388 and get a doubling of, of April 9-4 or April 9, April 19. So we see the symbols of 9-11 and July 18, when that cry, hidden in your nearest birthday, who, as we've already read, acquired fame by perpetrating an act on his own people for his own purposes and blaming the Christians uh, so yeah, on 9-11 and July 18, the blame was or was to be put on Islam, correct? Uh, but we know that before long, when a mark of the beast is in place, the blame will be put on us, Christians. So I thought that was an interesting connection also with Nero, who blamed the Christians, uh, falsely blamed the Christians. Uh, so we know that 9-11 is the arrival of the second angel's message on our land. Based on the quantum system, right? Uh, now comes the word that I have declared that New York is to be swept away by a tidal wave. This I have never said. I have said, as I looked at the great buildings going up there, story after story, what terrible scenes will take place when the Lord shall rise to shake terribly the earth. Then the words of Revelation 18, 1 to 3 will be fulfilled. And if you read Revelation 18, 1 to 3, I will uh, read it. It says, And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every false spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the red of, the red of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. So she says this, uh, she mentions this in the quote about uh, 
We built us in New York, so we connect this to 911. And if if Rome or Babylon is behind the 911 attacks, uh, does does that not constitute a major remark in their progressive fall? Right, uh, they're working towards the Sunni law, and the fall will be complete when we have a war for Sunni law. So 9-11 was another step in their agenda uh, towards that goal, but does it not mark a significant block and a new moral low point in their Buddhist efforts towards uh, the signature goal? I would say so. And we also know that they will sink ever deeper until a rule of Assembly Law has been accomplished, at which point the fall is complete and Michael will stand up to protect his people and judge the world. So I think we should read these verses uh, with that in mind. Uh, and knowing how, uh, how Babylon is, is, is uh, Uh, operating, uh, Babylon uh, is trying to accomplish their agenda. Uh, uh, in, 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 uh, with no respect for life, uh, human life, they uh, resort to, to uh, Every yeah, all means uh, possible to to their disposal. Uh, um, so I think we should read these verses in, in that context. We, if you read the first three, for example, uh, it says the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. Uh, we see this especially also during the, uh, the COVID crisis where uh, countries all over the world have the same uh, the, the same uh, we it, measures uh, it seems that they are cooperating uh, on the, the level, also, you know, when it says the merchants of the earth are less rich to the abundance of the delicacies, uh, many have uh, yeah, gotten rich of, of, of this, this uh, COVID crisis. Uh, for example, by, by selling these, these uh, vaccines, billions and billions uh, of dollars have been. Uh, are going uh, uh, in that direction. So they are getting rich of, of, of these, these, these schemes. Uh, so I think uh, it, speak, it speaks to us, these verses, uh, to us in these days that we are living in. Uh, so yeah, that's. that's is um, certainly applicable to, to, to our time. Uh, it says, yeah, Babylon is fallen as far as become an invitation of devils, the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Uh, and if you look more closely at, at what is happening, uh, Which we will not do, but we know that that, that they uh, are involved in the occult. Um, uh, things are taking place that uh, are, uh, are beyond description. It's uh, horrible what these people are, are capable of uh, of doing. It's uh, horrendous, and, uh, but these verses uh, apply to, to 
to our days, to time that we are living in. People have no idea what we are dealing with. These are uh, horrendous acts that we are committing, to say the least. Uh, looking at 9-11, uh, uh, viewing it as an inside job, uh, it does not detract anything from this uh, monumental uh, event being our most fundamental landmark on the line uh, and the beginning of the third row. It is, it is the beginning of the third row uh, period and uh, that some of our opponents, they too claim that I have lost in such job and say that for yeah, that reason it cannot be the beginning of the third row uh, because they say it has to be Islam. And, uh, if it's not Islam, then it cannot be the third row. They say Islam needs to have it needs to be Osama that uh, committed the attack. Otherwise, it cannot be the beginning of the third world. But yeah, we then therefore feel necessary to defend this remark by effectively claiming that 9 11 was not an inside job. Uh, which, uh, in that aspect, is completely unnecessary to defend 9 11 in that way because the third row is not about a single day, it's not about just 9 11, but it's about a period of time, just as the second, uh, the first and second row were also periods of time. And, uh, Islam will is playing currently an important uh, part in uh, world uh, events, but it will most certainly play a major part in events uh, yet to come. Uh, we, 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 uh, we, we did see uh, I forgot to read this part uh, the, the war on terror and false Islam and began on 9 11, no matter who started it. And till this day, we see Islam causing woe and terror in many cities and countries all around the world. And we will see more of Islam in the, in the future, I, uh, I fear. So that's uh, about 9 11. And um, I would like to go to a letter that was written by Albert Pike, the famous Freemason. Uh, yeah, first of all, we believed that July 18, 2020 was to be the midnight cry in the beginning of World War III involving Islam. Right? Uh, it is then remarkable that a letter has been discovered by uh, William Guy Carr, a former intelligence officer in the Royal Canadian Navy, which he publicized in a book in 1957 that seems to hint at exactly that. Uh, so this letter is hinting, uh, it's talking about the World War III involving Islam and talk, talks about uh, setting up a new world order. But this letter was supposedly written by 33rd degree Grandmaster and Freemason of the Pied to Jesuit General Giuseppe Massini. And in this Letter Albert Pike proposes that there should be three world wars in order to implement a new world order. The plan is based on the 
Egerian and dialectic principle, which is a principle to create uh, 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 chaos, such chaos and mystery, uh, that the people are eventually willing to subject themselves to anything in return for peace and safety. But the Egerian dialectic is a, is a principle that you, you, you cause a problem and you already have the solution in place. Uh, it's a problem uh, reaction solution principle, which is often uh, used uh, a, way of, a way of manipulating uh, to get to the point you, you desire, to the objective that you desire. But in this letter, it's talking about creating chaos and misery uh, in order for people to accept something uh, that, they, that, they, that was the object in the first place. So here's part of the letter. It says the Third World War must be fomented by taking advantage of the differences caused by the attenture of the Illuminati between the political Zionists and the leaders of the Islamic world. The war must be conducted in such a way that Islam, the Muslim Arabic world, and political Zionism, which is the state of Israel, mutually destroy each other. Meanwhile, the other nations, once more divided on this issue, will be constrained to fight to the point of complete physical, moral, spiritual, and economical exhaustion. So that's quite a mouthful. Uh, he also talks about the First and Second World War. Uh, but, yeah, about the Third World War, it's interesting that uh, he mentions Islam, he mentions uh, the, I just say it here, that they are working towards this uh, new world order, but this is part of the letter, uh, but it is, First of all, addressed to a uh, Jesuit general. So it involves uh, one, which you know, uh, yeah, is 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 uh, our main uh, key player in this whole uh, scenario, right? It's the anti-defense, you know, the Jesuit play a major part in all this. It's about uh, World War Three. It's about Islam, and it's about purposely instigating these conflicts, or as you can call it, a false flag defense. And it's about establishing a, a new world order. Uh, so it has all the ingredients of uh, our midnight crisis scenario that we are talking about. Um, so uh, we said July 18 would possibly cause a, a, a third world war. Islam uh, would be involved. Uh, but in, in, in our scenario, we are talking about uh, Babylon instigating these uh, events. So, if our scenario is true, then Rome, Babylon would be involved. And here in this letter, we see uh, this dead Jesuit general, Massini, being mentioned, to which this letter was uh, addressed. And we know that the agenda is about creating a new order. So, we see all this. Uh, uh, connections there with, with our scenario. 
in this this letter that was supposedly written by Robert Pike and was uh, mentioned in his book in 1957. And if that, this isn't uh, enough, if this is not sufficient, the letter is dated August 15, 1871. So we see here August 15, the symbol of the Millard Choir, 1844. And also we see uh, the symbol of July 18 at the same time, which to me is... Uh, it's impossible, it's uh, hard to think that this can be a coincidence. But about this letter, of course, people say it's, it's a fake letter. Uh, people are trying to discredit this letter. Uh, but, but whether or not this letter is authentic, uh, these connections just seem to be overwhelming to disregard it as a mere coincidence. And I, 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 I tried to check out this, uh, the writer of this, this book, I forgot his name. Uh, what was his name? William Guy Carr, right? He was a former intelligence officer in the Royal Canadian Navy. And I, I found a, an audio recording of him on YouTube when he was doing a, a, a lecture on the existence of, of uh, the secret societies and he was trying to warn people of yeah, the, the coming new world order and yeah it, it, as I, yeah, as I was listening to him, I, uh, it seemed to me a very uh, a modest man, intelligent man. He wasn't, he wasn't looking to sell uh, books or he wasn't doing this for money. He was especially interesting in, uh, in giving these lectures in, in churches. He wanted to make them aware um, of, of, of uh, these secret societies and uh, wanted to warn people and yeah. uh, it didn't seem he, he was some kind of uh, a con man, some kind of uh, shenanigan. He seemed alright to me, but, uh, but it doesn't, doesn't matter uh, in that sense that whether this letter is fake or not. The fact is, this was uh, discovered in 1957 and the connections are there with our uh, with our scenario. And, and I think this is, 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 is no, no coincidence. Uh, we will continue with the uh, next slide. So up, up, up to now, I, I uh, uh, we, we are looking at at, at uh, to, to, we are trying to make a case that July 18 was also in, uh, uh, a false flag attempt that was cancelled because of the widespread publicity that we gave to it. Uh, but there are other, there's an, uh, another angle from which you can look uh, to July 18 that um, might also possibly add weight to our supposition that uh, uh, July 18 was, was uh, 
that the prophecy was, was uh, I can say, conditional, so to say. So if, if you look at uh, the natural visions of Sister Wright, we Uh, yeah, we will look at uh, these visions. Uh, she says, uh, the visions of, sorry, this is not, this, this not a quote, these are my words. Uh, the visions of Sister Wright concerning the bonfire on Nashville uh, may, give some, may give us some additional information that exacerbate to the scenario that an imminent attack on Nashville may have been averted by giving publicity to it. And we have studied these visions to some extent. And besides all the abundant midnight cry symbolism that we saw in there, we observed that in each and every one of these visions, the people were aware that we had foreknowledge of the destructive event that came upon Nashville. And in each and every one of these visions, the Nashville citizens accused us for not having warned them beforehand about this fireball that just hit the uh, national. But the thing is that we did give the warning. We uh, tried to warn them in, in every way possible uh, by uh, this, this uh, advert in, in, in the newspaper, in the national newspaper, and in other ways, we sent emails to the churches, etc., etc., uh, websites, with all the information. But we did give national warning of uh, possible uh, attack. On, on, uh, on the city of Nashville. And by doing so, we unknowingly interfered with this prophecy of Anna Wright. Uh, and that way, we have rendered it uh, invalid. Uh, but these are uh, the quotes that we're talking about, the visions that she saw. You don't have to read uh, the whole thing, but uh, the point being is in every one of these visions, people saying uh, uh, you knew it, you knew that this was coming and never said a word to warn us. They seemed as though they would almost tear into pieces to think they had never told them or given them any warning at all. And has there been a case? I mean, if if a fireball comes down on Nashville tomorrow, can can they say uh, you never said a word to warn us? Can they say? Uh, yeah, that, that, we, that, that we never told them or gave them uh, any warning at all. Because the uh, uh, point is that we did, we did give them warning. Uh, even though nothing happened on July 18 itself. Uh, but we did make them aware of this vision of Sister Wright that someday a fireball will hit uh, Nashville. So they. Uh, can not say that we did not uh, warn them. Uh, and this is the second uh, quote. We had seven of them. And here we did the same thing. We did the same thing. Uh, we, we did not know about these things. Why did you leave us in ignorance? Again and again, if you have seen us. Why did you not become acquainted with us and tell us of the judgment to come? So that's it. Now we are lost. Uh, if you go back a little bit, it says, if you believe that these things were coming, 
Why did you not tell us? It was a terrible response. But we, uh, yeah, we, we did tell them, right? And by doing so, by telling them, we, like it says, we kind of interfered with this prophecy and rendering it, rendering it uh, as sort of interfered. And it also says, uh, you knew in the last uh, sentence, you knew, why then did you not tell us? We did not know. On every side, I heard such words spoken. So, on every side, so the people were obviously not warned when this fireball hit Nashville. On every side, I heard words, such words spoken. So, the people in the refreshing were not warned of this fireball in Nashville. Uh, and again, you knew, said another, you were my neighbor, why did you not tell me that these things were coming? Why did you not want to warn others? Uh, says the same thing here, why did you not tell us? Why did you not warn us? And show us the prophecies. But we have showed them, right? We uh, went to great length trying to warn them. So even if Though nothing happened, we gave the warning. And should, should it happen tomorrow or next month or next year or 10 years? They can never say that we, they cannot say we, we never warned them. Of course we did, even if it was 10 years ago. But, so I hope you, you guys can see this. Uh, others with agonized forces said to you, why then did you not tell us we did not know on every side again? I heard similar words of reports spoken. Uh, and it says the same thing here. We knew it, said the people, you knew it, and never told us about it. I thought there was such an agony in their forces, such an agony in their appearance. And you are just standing there saying, yeah, we expected this, we expected uh, this. So apart from all the meta cries and OBG, uh, pointing to the meta cry, pointing to July 18, uh, we see that they were not warned. So I'm, I'm trying to say that by giving the warning, we unknowingly again, interfered with uh, this prophecy, which is implying that if we should not have warned them for fear, for example, that our prophecy might not come to pass or for fear of losing face, uh, certain destruction might have come upon Nashville on the very day that we predicted it. Uh, and then we would have seen the July 18 prophecy come to pass exactly like an white sign vision. And we would be standing there claiming that it was exactly as we expected. Well, the people of Nashville would wring their hands in agony and blame us for not having warned them. Well, it makes sense, uh, right? Uh, but again, we did have the only right thing we had to do. Because if we would not have given a warning, if the fireball would have uh, been following an issue, uh, the Lord himself would have held us responsible. Uh, if we would not have given the warning to Nashville. So making this uh, a conditional prophecy, and we are familiar with conditional prophecies, so this is not something uh, new. Some people find it uh, difficult to comprehend how this could be a conditional prophecy, but uh, yeah, all, all, all the connections that we are seeing seems to 
be pointing in that, uh, that direction. So, Amen. going to, going to uh, shortly back to 9 11 again to try to uh, make a case uh, for this uh, superstition. If you look at 9 11, we also said that uh, Islam intervened just at the right time to prevent a Sondera from being implemented. We believe that July 18, 2020 was to be the second Islamic attack in the USA after 9 11. And we were presenting that these attacks take place as a punishment on the USA for trying to implement Sunday law and for oppressing God's people. And we took the position, uh, 9 11 presented, prevented the implement, implementation of Sunday law, and that Islam interfered just at the right time to disturb their, these wicked plans so that God's people would have more time to prepare. But if you look at the situation shortly before 9 11, it was nowhere near the situation we are currently facing. Uh, so I'm talking about the, the COVID crisis and uh, also the war in Ukraine. We see now things uh, it, it deteriorate. Deteriorating, that the word, getting worse and worse uh, very quickly uh, worldwide. Uh, and prices are going up uh, exponentially, exponentially, especially of gas, but also food, clothing, etc. We see sh short shortages. Uh, we see the recession, uh, but th th these things um, were not so much present in uh, 2001, not in the, in the same degree as we see now. Uh, in, in, in 2001, I read from, from uh, the slide. In 2001, there was no trace or sign at all of whatsoever that hinted towards the, the introduction or the necessity of a Sunday law. Uh, there did not seem to be any ground or justification for implementing a Sunday law. And it's very unlikely that the USA was about to proclaim one just out of the blue but there seemed no reason at all to make such a bold move. And should they have done so, it would not have much chance of success, for it would have certainly encountered massive nationwide resistance from the secular world, or even uh, uh, Protestants themselves. But, uh, th there was no worldwide crisis uh, before 9-11 place, not in a way that we felt it necessary to implement a Sunday law. Um, times are, that we are now living in are way worse than shortly before 9 11. And even now, there's no. Uh, yeah, excuse to implement a Sunday law because of the, 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 the circumstances. Uh, and there need to be a, a lot more happening before they can uh, declare one. Uh, again, if, if they would do so now, if they would declare some law right now, people would resist. Uh, we saw people, people resisting against the, the COVID mandate, right? And, uh, 
in, in Canada, this, 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 these truckers that uh, were uh, protesting, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they are they are not re not ready yet today to implement the law. That uh, as the situation is uh, right now. And there was the conditions were way way better in uh, 2001 shortly before 9 left to place. So, uh, instead, as you, know from, as you know from inspiration that the Sunday law will be, uh, let me read it again, instead we know from inspiration that the Sunday law will be introduced only after the Protestants and the secular powers will demand for it themselves. Uh, calamity and woe, such as natural disasters, plagues and disease, financial crisis, civil unrest, war, etc., uh, will convince Protestants that God is punishing this world. And for that reason, they will plead for a return to the Ten Commandments, including, of course, the Sunday Sabbath, to appease the Lord that he may turn away his wrath so that prosperity may return to what it once was. We know that this needs to happen before the Sunday law will be implemented. Uh, we are uh, heading in that direction. Uh, as you can uh, see right now, but this was not the case before 9-11. So I do not believe that uh, we prevented the Sunday law from being implemented by 9 11 text that Islam prevented uh, such a thing. We know that the uh, build up towards the Sunday law will be progressive with ever increasing calamities accompanied with a gradual decline of the constitutional rights and freedoms of the people. And that is what we saw happening at 9-11. 9-11 was the beginning of a crisis and was being used, among other things, to introduce the Patriot Act, which was written uh, long before 9-11 and was a clear infringement of the freedoms and rights of the people. There we went from English law to Roman law. So this is, uh, yeah, in fact, uh, similarly now with this premeditated corona pandemic, we see this crisis being used to further control the masses and take away our constitutional rights. Uh, Satan knows uh, that for a Sunday law to be supported by the people, a major crisis first needs to take place so that they will accept anything in return for prosperity, peace and safety. And in order to have total control, the people's liberties needs to be stripped away gradually. Right, as not to arouse too much suspicion. And slowly we are being groomed to get accustomed to the idea that it is necessary for the government to watch and control our every move uh, for our own well-being and safety. And uh, a sudden taking of control, of control over the people would of course meet with martial resistance uh, so with regard to 9-11, I believe it's safe to assert that Islam did not prevent the implementation of the Sunday law, but rather instead Islam was scapegoated to get us another step closer towards a new world order and a Sunday law. That's uh, the case uh, I'm trying to make that all these remarks that we saw in uh, 1989, 
there were a lot of the requires and a lot of all steps uh, towards the accomplishment of their uh, agenda. Uh, I don't know how, how I'm doing time wise. Uh, if in one hour and a half, can I still uh, carry on? Brother Steve. Can, can I'm, really asking you a question. You need I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I got distracted there for a second. What was that, Odilio? Uh, can I continue? Uh, yes. No. Uh, one hour. One hour twenty minutes. Yeah, you can yeah, continue. Yes. If you if you're not done, keep going. <laughs> and if you want to take a break for a few minutes, and then we'll come back, we can do that. And maybe people want to take a break or five minutes or whatever. I'm, I'm okay with a break. For, let's just take, let's take a five minute break and we'll come back. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Sounds good. <clears throat> Sounds good. All right. Uh, I'll just uh, continue then. So you were talking about uh, Islam being uh, scapegoated, scapegoated, uh, and then eleven to get us closer to the new order. Uh, what I found interesting is that in. Uh, 2010, a whistleblower came forward whose uh, grandparents were connected uh, to the secret societies. And he stated that uh, already in the 1980s, they would openly discuss amongst themselves about uh, blowing up the World Trade Center, they were talking about uh, detonating a nuclear weapon in the city uh, somewhere in the USA, all in order to uh, bring about the new order, that's what he claimed. And he also mentioned Hillary Clinton, that she was uh, leading, uh, she has a high leadership position within these groups. Uh, they were also involved in the occult. This was something that uh, I did not discover. It was something that, that Stephen Jameson uh, discovered and showed it to me. But it's striking how uh, that also connects, connects to this to our scenario. Uh, so the, the, the blowing up of, of the World Trade Center that has happened, but the nuclear attack on a city in USA, I believe that was the plan for 2018, but which uh, was cancelled due to the publicity uh, was given to it. Uh, and by the way, this whistleblower, I tried to email him, I tried to check him out, and uh, he's, he's a real person. Uh, he, uh, Uh, yeah, he's, you can find him on the internet. His picture is there. Also, pictures of his uh, parents and grandparents are there. And it, it all seems to uh, uh, it, 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 the, uh, the things he is saying about his grandparents seem to be correct. The, the positions they had. Uh, the work that they were doing, they call it. It was some kind of, it's better, it was some kind of uh, 
a bit short for some company, which also seems to be correct. But uh, yeah, um, I find these connections interesting to say the least. But uh, continuing with our PowerPoint presentation, uh, going to the next slide. So I, I believe it matters uh, whether you believe Islam or Babylon was behind the non attacks. It matters, uh, first of all, prophetically. Uh, of course, in our continued search for present truth, but also for the sake of uh, those who begin to see the many deceptions of Babylon that uh, God is now revealing to the world. We read about uh, uh, in Revelation 18, verse 1, that an angel comes down and the whole world is uh, light, lighted with his glory. And I believe that uh, the light that is, is, is uh, shining includes the, 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 the deceptions of Babylon, the lies of Babylon, and the, the wickedness uh, of, of their sin that is what God is showing to the world in, in, in an attempt to, to wake them up, to shake them up. And we also have uh, Luke 8, 17, where it says, for nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come of what. So God is uh, revealing to us as these uh, secret maneuvers, secret uh, actions, uh, and it is important that we recognize these things. Uh, if, if we believe Islam was bad, then I think, I believe, it, then, then I think we make a mistake. Uh, if you believe Islam was bad, then I think we choose to believe a lie because there is a lot of information good information that shows uh, otherwise. Uh, if you choose to believe the vaccine, for example, is safe and effective, you also choose to believe a lie. You know that the vaccine, based upon information that's out there, good information, that the vaccine is far from safe and effective. But that is what we are, we are being told from uh, the authorities, the governments. They say, it's uh, safe and effective. They say 9 11 was done by Osama. Uh, yeah, I find it interesting also that they say that Nero was not responsible for the fires. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I don't mind saying that, that uh, he is. So I see a, a parallel there also. But uh, these lies uh, originate from the same source, which is uh, Babylon. Um, and especially since 9 11, people are waking up to the reality as to how this world is really turning. And we need to be the ones telling them uh, the truth of the matter and how all these events tie in with biblical end time prophecy. Um, especially we as Seventh-day Adventists are expected to be able to discern truth from lies and to discern the word of God. Uh, I don't have many slides left. Uh, I uh, wasn't aware that 
uh, almost at the end. Uh, so I could have continued. Uh, anyway, I uh, also wanted to look at, at, at the real life history. We said that uh, middle art history will repeat to the very letter. And first of all, we believe that July 18 would be a second coming uh, for the priest. And we line up this way more with uh, October 22nd, 1844. This the middle rights believe to be the second coming. So we should expect to see similar characteristics between July 18, 2020 and October 22nd, 1844. And indeed, just like the middle rights, we did not see our prophecy come to pass in the way that we expected. We did, we did not see anything happen. And great was our disappointment, just as with the middle rights. So you see a connection there, first of all. Uh, many turned against the July 18 prophecy, which was also the case in, in middle rights history. Uh, but despite the lack of evidence, we know that the 2nd, 1844 was a valid date. We know that. Uh, Something else took place on that date. That Jesus moved to the most holy place. Uh, but there was uh, no official evidence uh, of that, of course. So, you know, October 22nd was a favorite date, just like July 18. It's my. Uh, Uh, my point. We also know that October 22nd, 1844, uh, the disappointment served as a test, just like July 18 also served as a test. And this test it was meant to shift out those who joined for the wrong reasons. Who had a lack of faith or just failed to recognize his voice? Uh, should July 18 have come to pass exactly as we predicted it? Possibly thousands or even millions would have joined our movement, and many undoubtedly would have joined for the wrong reasons, just as was the case in Middle Rights history, when over 200,000 people joined the Middle Rights. After the prediction of the Lynch came to pass on August 11, 1840. But after the great disappointment, only 50 of the last 200,000 people remained. And we saw a similar thing happening in our movement. And today, only a very few people are left that uh, dare to stand for the fidelity of the. July 18 prophecy. Uh, even though uh, we didn't see, we, we have uh, no official evidence uh, of what um, yeah, might have happened on July 18. Uh, even the event of the founder of the Miller Art Movement, which was of course William Miller, uh, being drawn away from the truth after the disappointment, which is why says Miller was uh, um, how do you call it? He uh, was being misled by Satan. Uh, we, we, who used those close to William Miller to set them on a side track. Uh, but we see this also in a way being parallel in our history. Uh, Sister White 
So she is nevertheless a safe man. So we see these parallels uh, within the main art history uh, compared to uh, July 18. So all uh, what has been presented uh, All the foregoing information went completely uh, unheeded by our movement. Uh, I believe that all this can in no way be a mere coincidence. This is uh, the very same force that spoke to us during the development of the July 18th study. And the Lord, the Lord is obviously trying to tell us something here. We must ask the question what significance uh, all this has for us today. Like it says in John uh, 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So we need to have uh, discernment. Uh, we need to uh, know what is true, what is, what is error, what is uh, uh, yeah, we need to recognize uh, the force of, uh, of God. Uh, but yeah, it matters if 9 11 was, was a lie. Uh, if 9 11 was uh, uh, is a joke, then it matters if we should uh, acknowledge it and. and Uh, yeah, uh, so we should uh, deal with it uh, in the correct way, uh, prophetically. Uh, and I think there is no 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 middle way. Uh, you know that within the movement there are those that vehemently opposed to such a scenario that 9 11 uh, could be an inside job. And they, they also say themselves that just believing that 9 11 was an inside job is imperiling uh, your, your salvation. Uh, Yeah, they say that they believe that uh, if if you think in this conspiracy or in conspiracies, uh, in conspiracy theories, that your salvation is uh, at stake. Uh, I'm not talking uh, in the study about other uh, conspiracies, conspiracy theories. I'm just talking about 9/11 and. Uh, I do not. Be, I do. I do not believe. Let me put that. Uh, make it clear. I do not believe that the Earth is flat. Uh, there are many uh, false uh, conspiracies. You can find the most uh, ridiculous conspiracies are out there. But, uh, But 9 11 is uh, definitely not a theory, it's a conspiracy fact. If you just uh, take the time to look into it, and it matters. I agree in that sense with uh, those that uh, uh, are on the other side of the issue. Uh, they say that it matters. Uh, and I say it matters. <laughs> so uh, we, yeah, we need to take a stand. We need to make a decision. Um, I think it's very important to be on the right side of this issue. Uh, 
So yeah, we have uh, arrived at the last slide. Uh, I was not, uh, I could have continued uh, without the break. This is uh, one more slide about uh, 9-11 documentaries. I can, uh, I'd like to encourage those that have not seen these uh, documentaries to, to go and watch these. This is uh, yeah, one of the best uh, videos I, I, I could find I have seen concerning 9 11. Then September 11, the new Pearl Harbor. It has three parts. In total, it's about five and a half hours. Uh, it covers a lot of information, and even that is not even half of the evidence. Uh, that's out there. There's also another documentary calling on Bravo, which you see uh, below, which is a documentary that is uh, made by, by the firemen of New York. Yeah, they have done a great job in uh, exposing uh, the, the 9 11 events. And uh, I showed this to a good friend of mine, who is uh, an, an atheist, he's an, a non-believer. And he was convinced after that, that 9-11 was indeed an inside job. And uh, yeah, then I tried to show him uh, the, 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 some information about the COVID crisis, about the, 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 the vaccines. Uh, but he, he already uh, had two uh, vaccines, two, two jabs, and he was planning of uh, taking a third, the booster shot. Even after I showed him all the information concerning uh, vaccines, and he said, uh, "I'm gonna just, I, I don't buy this." Concerning the, the COVID conspiracy, I'm, I'm just going to take the, the, the booster shot. So this was uh, a few months ago. And I, I looked him up two weeks ago, and, uh, and he was completely bald. And his, his, uh, his doctor said that this might have been an effect uh, uh, they call it autoimmune reaction due to the possibly due to the infection. So now he has reconsidered taking uh, the, the booster shot. He, he said, I, I, won't, I won't take it. He said. So that was uh, yeah, hopeful. But uh, yeah, from being there, there's uh, good information out there. Uh, people should be aware of these things. It's important. The Lord himself is trying to show us these uh, things. Uh, and we must expose the sins of Babylon. Uh, that's part of our job. So go watch uh, this, uh, these documentaries and uh, yeah, let every man be persuaded in his own mind. And that's uh, the end of that. Thanks for watching. Listening. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Adelio. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you much, my brother. Praise God. Thank you very much. Were you going to end with prayer, Odilio? Yes. And dear Father in heaven, thank you for uh, this uh, 
a little study that we were able to to do that uh, the things that we have seen may make an impression uh, on our hearts, help us to do or will help us to, to do the right thing, help us to be aware of the times that we are living in, help us to discern what the difference between truth and error help us to to warn others, help us to prepare Lord for this uh, coming, give us uh, strength, the courage to do what we have to do and bless us with all the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we need to do the work. And by ourselves we can do nothing. Uh, please help us Lord. And Continue uh, to bless this uh, Sabbath. Uh, guide us every step on the way. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, and we ask you all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.